Okay, uh, some algebra worked exam questions. Um, these are all at the foundation level, so they're great up going up to grade C, and quite a few of them are a lot less level than that. So let's start with the first one, which is about function machines, and uh, the first function we're going to do is times by nine. So we're putting eight into the machine. Eight times nine is going to be our output, which is seventy-two. Don't forget, if it's a calculator-based question. Obviously, use your calculator to help you get the right answers. Um, this function machine is take away 83, so 100 take away 83 is going to be 17. Um, here is two more function machines, but these have got two stages in them, so we need to figure out a, um, a combination that's going to work to take us from 9 to 11 depending on these functions. So we've got a multiply and a subtract. So if I'm going to multiply 9, let's let's look at try maybe times by 1. If I times by 1, I get 9. And then, hmm, tricky to take away, you can do it. You could take away negative 2 to get to 11. Much easier though, just to times by 2 to get 18. Then do 18, take away 7 to get 11. I could use bigger numbers, so I could times by 3 to get 27. And then take away 16 to get to 11 or even times by 10 to get 90 and then take away 79 and take it down to 11 so any combination that works is fine but 2 and 7 are the easiest to uh, and then we've got a, an add and divide now divide usually causes a lot of people problems but if you keep it simple it should be okay so we've got to think of something that's going to be simple to divide to get to 11 Now the simplest divide I can think of is what, dividing by 1 and what if I've got to divide by 1 to get to 11? Well, 11. So what if I've got to add to 9 to get to 11? 2. So I'll add 2 to 9 to get to 11. 11 divided by 1 is going to be 11. Obviously I can use bigger numbers, so I could add 13 to get to uh, 22, and then divide by 2. Or I could add 90 to get to 99, and then divide by 9 to get to 11 or any other combination that works that gets you back to 11. OK, here we've got a two-stage function machine. The input is 5. We're adding 6 to 5 to give us 11. And then we're multiplying 11 by 3 to give us 33. That gives us the output, which is 33. Now, if we know the output is 90, and we're trying to find what goes in to make it 90, um, then we could try lots of values in here, just getting bigger and s bigger until we get to the right answer. So we could try 10, add 6 is 16, times by 3 is 48, 20, add 6 is 26, uh, times by 3 is 78, and so on, so we get pretty close there. Or we can work backwards, which is much quicker, um, by just undoing what's been done. This is multiplied by 3, so to undo that we divide by 3 to get 30. And then we need to undo the add 6, so we're going to take away 6 and 30 take away 6 is 24 so our input is 24, we could just check that by times in uh, sorry, adding 6 to 24 to make 30 and times by 3 is 90 and there's the answer OK, an algebra question in a table work out the values x, y and z, so each row adds up to these numbers and each column adds up to those numbers and we've got to figure out a way to get the answer. Well I could go two ways this, I could use this first row I've got x plus x plus x is 12, what number add it to cell 3 times is 12, well that could that would have to be 4, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. Now the proper algebra for that would be 3x equals 12, so x equals 4. Once we know that's 4, we can fill in all these they've got X's on them, um, then we need to try and find the next one which would probably be the best to do would be Y. So we've got 4 plus 4 and 2Y, so 8 plus 2Y equals 10. That's what this row is telling us. We've got 8, 4 and 4 is 8, plus the 2Y equals 10. So what do we have to add to 8 to get 10? Well we have to add 2 to 8 to get 10 and 2 lots of what is 2? Well that's 1. So two. So y is 1, so 2y equals 2. That would be equal to 3. Now I could go across here, 8 plus 3 plus z is 16. Uh, 
or I could even come down here 4 plus 2 plus Z is 11. They'll both give you the same answer so we've got 11 plus something is 16 so that's going to be 5 or 6 plus something is 11 that's also going to be 5 so Z is going to be 5 Y is 1 X is 4 and then that's worth 5 marks okay working out some values when we substitute some values in so half x plus 3y the half of x, x is 10 minus 3 dots of y, y is 2, so we've got 3 times 2 a half of 10 is 5 take away 3 times 2 is 6 you must work out these before you do the subtraction you must do the times in first. So 5 take away 6 is negative 1. Write down the value of ABC. A is 10. ABC means A times B which is 2 times C which is 0 and anything times 0 is 0. Solve this equation 5A plus 3A is 16. Well first of all if we add the two, two things here together we get 8A equals 16 so what have I got to times by 8 to get 16? Well that's clearly 2. So A is 2. Uh, X divided by 3 plus 5 equals 9. Now a lot of equations you can get through just by trying some values. So if I tried, I've got to keep it uh, nice value. So let's try something divided by 3 that I know works like 30 divided by 3 is 10 plus 5 is 15. That's too big. I could try a smaller number and the thing that 3 goes into maybe 20, 21 divided by 3 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12 and so on until I get to the right answer or I can use the rules of equations so first thing I can do here is to take away the 5 from both sides to get x divided by 3 equals 4 and then if I know something divided by 3 equals 4 to undo that I times by 3 so I get x equals 4 times 3 which is 12 because 12 divided by 3 is 4 and 4 plus 5 is 9 so x equals 12 okay a bit of simplification 2y and 8y sorry 2w and 8w that makes 10w solve uh, 6x equals 24 or well, what times 6? Six? 6 times something is 24 well that something is 4 uh, an equation with a bracket in. Now whenever I see brackets in equations I would strongly recommend that you multiply out the bracket because there's always a method mark for multiplying out a bracket. So we've got 3 times the y is 3y plus 3 times the 2 which is 6 and that equals 30. So something times 3 plus 6 is 30 so that 3 times something must be 24 so I'm adding 6 to make 30, so if I take 6 off I get 24. And what do I times by 3 to make 24? Well 3 times 8 is 24, so y equals 8. And we've got a much trickier question here, so this sort of grade C equation with letters on both sides and a bracket. So again, multiply out the brackets, so we get 5 lots of x, 5 times x, and 5 lots of minus 4 is minus 20. The most common mistake here is that people forget to multiply the second part of the bracket and just put minus 4 there, but you must times by the 5 is 3x plus 7, that will get you one mark for doing that. Take away the 3x from both sides, so I take a 3x from here, take 3x from here, that gives me 2x minus 20 equals 7. Then if I add 20 to both sides, to there and to here, I get 2x equals 27. So x equals 27 divided by 2, which is 13.5 or 13.5. You can always put the numbers back in to check if it works. Um, would help if you had a calculator though, because it's not, not the easiest one to check that it works. Okay, terms in a sequence, but this is written in algebra. So if we start with a plus 3b is our first term, the next term is 2a plus 5b. You can see that I'm adding an A here and two B's here. Let's just check that works for the next one. So 5B plus 2B is 7B. 
2a plus a is 3a. So the next term, which is what you've got to do, 3a plus a is 4a, and 7b plus 2b is 9b. So we've got 4a plus 9b. So we can treat them separately. We've got a, 2a, 3a, 4a, 3b, 5b, 7b, 9b. Substituting values in again, so x is 2, so we've got 3 lots of 2 plus 4 lots of 5. We must work out these multiplications first, so we get 6 plus 20, which is 26. Expand, that means to multiply out the brackets, that means get rid of the brackets. So we're doing c times c, and c times c is c squared, and then we've got c times this minus 3 which is minus 3c. Always put the number in front of the letter. On this sort of question your two marks would be one for this part and one for this part. Factorise means put the bracket back in, so we're looking to put a bracket in here. This is a plus sign here so that stays the same. And Then we've got to figure out what what thing goes into both of these. Well there's, there's only one letter here, there's a d, so there's no letters that go into both of these, but there's a number 3 and 12 and what the biggest number that goes into both 3 and 12 is 3. Now to figure out what goes in the brackets, what do you times 3 by to get 3d? We times by d. And what do you times 3 by to get 12? Well that's 4. So 3 lots of d plus 4. Okay, expression that is 4 more than n. So that's n plus 4, which is that one. Expression that is 1 quarter of n, a quarter of n, Okay, there isn't one there that looks exactly the same as that, but quarter of n is the same as dividing by 4, which is that one. Two expressions that are equal to 18 with y is minus 4, well, let's work them all out. So we've got minus 4, minus 14, that's minus 18. Minus 4 plus 20, that's 16. 10 take away 2 lots of minus 4, which is minus 8. So 10 take away minus 8 is actually 10 plus 8, which is 18. Um, 3 lots of minus 4 is minus 12, take away 6 is minus 18. Minus 4 squared uh, plus 2, well minus 4 squared is minus 4 times minus 4 which is 16 plus 2 is 18. So two expressions are equal to 18 of that one and that one. Factorise 6p plus 4, so put a bracket in plus sign goes in the middle, what goes into both 6p and 4? Well, there's no letters that go into both, so the, it's not going to be p or anything, but uh, 6 and 4, the biggest number that goes in 6 and 4 is 2, and that's 2 lots of 3p, because 2 lots of 3p is 6p, and 2 lots of 2 is 4. Expand and simplify. Okay, so that means multiply out the brackets and then bring it all together. So if we do the first bracket, 4 lots of 2x is 8x, 4 lots of 1 is 4, now this is the really tricky bit, this gets gets people time and time again this bit, minus 3 lots of x is minus 3x, and minus 3 lots of minus 4 is 12, plus 12. So 8x take away 3x is 5x, and plus 4 plus 12 is plus 16. When, remember when you're combining um, parts of a algebraic expression. You keep the sign in front of the number or letter when you're combining it. Um, solve another question. This this really is a grade D question. Take away 2x from both sides. We get 4x minus 1 equals 4. Add 1 to both sides to get 4x equals 5. Divide by the 4 to get x equals 5 over 4. That's a fine answer. Could write 1 and a quarter, or we could write 1.25. They're all correct answers. Okay, now one with a fraction in it. So we take away the 3 from both sides, and we get c over 2 equals 7. And then we times by the 2. The key to solving equations is always to do the opposites. So if we divide by 2 here, we times by 2 to get rid of it. And that gives us c equals 14. Check that. 14 divided by 2 is 7, plus 3 is 10. Simplify this. So we've got 6x and 4x. That makes 10x. 
and then we've got the 5y minus 3y 5 take away 3 is 2y solve this equation, take away the 4c four, four to get 5c minus 3 equals 1 add 3 to get 5c equals 4 and divide by the 5 to get c equals 4 fifths which is the same as 0 0.8 so our answer is fine simplify this we're doing 2 times 3 times 4 2 3 is a 6 times 4 is 24 c times c is c squared and we've just got a d on the end show that this is true uh, when we're trying to show something this part we just ignore this is just like telling us the answer we can check this after we finished so just multiply out these brackets so we get 4 lots of 2p is 8p 4 lots of 1 is 4 3 lots of 2 is 6 and 3 lots of minus p is minus 3p 8p minus 3p is 5p and 4 plus 6 is 10 now we want it in a bracket so we've got to put the bracket in while well, the answer is there so we could pretty much just write this if we knew it we write this is just writing it down but uh, what we're doing is taking out the 5 we're dividing this by 5 and this by 5 to give us p plus 2 in the brackets okay Josh has said that all the angles all three angles in this, in this diagram are acute to prove it's not true or show it's not right we've got to work out what the angles are so we've got a little equation going on here we've got x, 2x and 30 equals 180 because that's a straight line is 180 degrees all this is going to be 180 so we've got 3x plus 30 is 180 take away the 30 we get 3x equals 150 so that means 1x divided by 3 150 divided by 3 is 50 so this angle is 50, 2x is 100, so this angle is not acute. Okay, an angle greater than 90, less than 180 is obtuse.